Hi everybody, it's Double Wide 6. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a video on how to clean a two cycle carburetor. As you can see, this carburetor is pretty dirty. So I'm going to use some compressed air and blow it up. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my screwdriver and I'm going to remove this plate here. So I'm taking out this screw. You don't want to lose that. And I'm going to remove the plate. And you can see what's inside there. You have a gasket, a couple gaskets. Now because I don't do this every day, I like to take some notes. So on the Walbro side of the carburetor, it says Walbro there. I'm going to take a note that the it goes the order is going to be the metal plate that says Walbro, then there's going to be a rubber gasket material, and then there's going to be there's the gasket, and then there's going to be this blue membrane. So it's going to go on the Walbro side. It goes the plate, the gasket and then the plastic and then the carb so I'll remember that order when I rebuild this and that's what the inside of that plate looks like and you can see it needs to be cleaned a little bit next I'm going to remove the metering side of the carburetor you can see that there's an air breathing hole here and you want to make a note that that hole is pointing towards the side of the carburetor that says Mexico which is right here I know it's pretty hard to see so I've made a note on the metering side of the carburetor the whole face is Mexico now I'm going to take the four Phillips head screws and I'm going to loosen them up one and then I'm going to remove the plate on the metering side of the carburetor and as you can see there's some dirt in there a little bit hard to see but there's a lot of debris in there on that diaphragm the next thing I like to look at before I move the diaphragm is to figure out the order so it's gonna go metal plate first then it goes diaphragm and then there's a gasket and then the carb so on the metering side of my carburetor um, you're going to put the metal plate, metal plate, diaphragm, and then it's going to be gasket, and then the carb. And I like to do that just so I'm sure that things are on right, and I don't do this every day, so I want to make sure I get it right. Now sometimes the gaskets stick to the carb, so what I like to do is take an X-Acto knife, and gradually work it underneath the gasket. Generally, when you have a problem with your carb, uh, usually the, the problem usually stems from the gasket right here becoming hard. So that metering diaphragm gets a little bit hard, and I just replace it. So we're working that off, and you can see this thing sticking a little bit. It even ripped, so it's good that I'm replacing it completely. There's actually two gaskets there, a diaphragm and a gasket, I mean. The next part of the carburetor that I'm going to remove is going to be the needle. So I'm going to hold on to this part here. You've got to be careful. There's a little spring under there. And we're going to take this Phillips head screw, and we're going to back that out, being careful to hold down. Once that little screw comes out, you want to carefully release and you'll see there's a little spring there that you don't want to lose the needle and basically the fulcrum not exactly sure what that thing's called but you get it all out and you don't want to lose these little parts alright so we basically have everything removed out of the carburetor except for the fuel screen so if you reach in here with a little pick you can pull this screen out 
and this is another small part that you don't want to lose and sometimes this gets clogged up with stale gas and uh, it won't allow the gas in the carburetor properly and it won't run so you don't want to lose the screen I usually blow it out with a little bit of compressed air but you got to make sure that you hold on to it with a pair of pliers otherwise it'll get lost if you take a look at the high and low screws you're going to notice that there's no spot for a screwdriver. They make special screwdrivers to go on these, but because I don't do small engine repairs all the time, I don't particularly have a screwdriver like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grind them flat on my grinder and then take a hacksaw and cut a notch into each screw so I can back them out with a flathead screwdriver. pretty loud grinder. The next thing I like to do is make a note of which screw is which. In this case I can clearly see that the high screw has sort of a ring around the top of it. So that little ring around the collar there I'm going to mark on my paper so I don't forget that when I clean it. So now I'm going to take a hacksaw and I'm going to carefully cut holes or notches in these two high and low screws just want to take your time and get it started and I'm just trying to center it on there the best I can and you're going to gradually work these screws so that you can cut down deep enough that you can get a small screwdriver in there to back them in and back them out and adjust them. Like I said, they make a screwdriver that you can probably get on eBay, but I just don't happen to have one and I gotta get this carburetor fixed because my chainsaw is not running. And that's probably enough. If we look closely, you'll be able to see that you can put a screwdriver in there. Now that I have those cut, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of compressed air and blow them off because of all the metal filing. And you want to try and keep those out of the carburetor as much as possible. The next thing I want to do is take each screw and count how many turns it needs to go in until it seats. So you're going to turn them clockwise. There's half a turn, one turn, one and a half. So the high screw needs to be turned one and a half. I want to write that down on my paper along with the fact that the high screw has the ring around the neck. Okay, both screws are right around one and a half. The low screw is a little bit more than one and a half. So I like to write that down just so I have record of it. And now we're going to back these screws completely out and we're going to clean them after this. So they're a little hard to get. So I'm just trying to take my time and work them out. Alright, the next thing that I like to do is take all my metal pieces. So both parts of the carb body as far as the plates go. I have the fulcrum, the needle, um, both the high and low set screw and their springs. I like to put all these things um, in carb cleaner and soak them overnight along with the spring and actually the carburetor itself. So if you look here I have a whole jar of carb cleaner that will completely immerse the carburetor. So we're just going to take the parts and we're going to gradually drop them in. Try not to get splashed. One, there's the entire carburetor. Two. So at this point what I like to do is just get all the remaining screws 
and I like to put them all in some sort of container so that they're all together and I have this little spring I like to keep that in the container as well and then finally what I'll do is I'll take my notes I'll rip that off and I will put it right in the jar because if I don't get to this for a couple days I like to have everything together so I know exactly what's going on for when I fix the carb and generally I'll let that soak probably for about two days and then uh, I'll come back and start reassembling the carburetor. So that concludes part one of this video.